you're having a big year, uh, Duff, this year, because besides a huge yeah. Guns N' Roses tour and a new single, perhaps, you're having not one, but two solo releases uh, of your own. Uh, right. Uh, first with the EP, This Is A Song, and now the Full Life uh, Lighthouse uh, record, which has came out. Yeah. Um, and the Iggy Pop record at the beginning. Also an Iggy and Pop record. And the Iggy record. Pop gig. That's yeah. Right. And, yeah, uh, so uh, yeah, the, 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 this is a song and a lighthouse record. They got like a, a different vibe, each one. But uh, are they you think? from the same joint session, yeah. or are they really separate? Also in the white. Yeah, I think the EP. Um, I don't know the reason. It maybe sounds different. Is because the songs are just three and it's set apart because. Somebody else said this, Laurent, like they sound different, like different sessions or different times, but it's all from the same uh, swath of yeah. songs that I recorded, which is 60 songs. Oh, yeah. 60? I have a lot of material. <laughs> yeah, I have a ton of material, and that's why, I, I mean, putting out this is the song for Mental Health Awareness Week was a, or month was a great opportunity to kind of, for me to raise my hand up and go, hey, you're not alone, you know? Okay. Um, I suffer these these things. But it was also, I have to get songs out because I have so many, you know? I have to start putting like EPs out, records, stuff, um, because I have 30 more songs to record and I'm gonna have 90 songs <laughs> before I know it. Um, but it, they were from the same session session whatever same two years that i recorded all the this stuff in and um i mean i really like the little standalone ep yeah it's really nice um and uh and then choosing the songs for lighthouse was a, a matter of i knew the song lighthouse would be the first song on the first record of this group of th <laughs> songs i have and i knew i the song I just don't know would be at the end. It just, it's just totally like that's the last song on the record vibe. And the trick was like putting songs in there, um, you know, lyrically that kind of told a little story. Or in my mind, there was peaks and valleys to a, a journey. Okay. And yeah. that's what I still consider a record to be, you know, a journey from beginning to end. And uh, I guess I'm old school in that. That yeah, way, sure. It's all about sequencing, I guess. The yeah, you sequence right. Stuff and all that. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's funny you mentioned. So, so it's from some, it's sixty songs is quite a lot, and so you get like many more solo releases coming. I guess <laughs> you're yeah, all set yeah. for like oh. the next ten years. <laughs> Think, yeah, I mean, I have I have my own studio now, so that coupled with I'd already started recording songs before COVID hit. You know, I got my new studio. We moved everything in. God, the room sounds great. You know, <laughs> like, how did I stumble into this? And it's four minutes from my house. It's an old studio from the 50s. And I was sitting, nobody knew it was there. Like, nobody, nobody, the Soundgarden guy, you know, Pearl Jam guys, guys have been, re people have been recording in this town since the early 80s. None of us knew it was there. It's kind of, Seattle's not that big, yeah. you know? So I stumbled into this place and um, started recording in there in 2000, end of 2019. And then we got to uh, Guns N' Roses, got, started rehearsing in LA. We were doing going to do a South American tour. It got to be late February, you know, early March. The world's, well, kind of Asia and kind of the Pacific Northwest. You heard about it in Europe, like mm -hmm. Italy. But we were going to South America. You know, it still wasn't dawned on us there was going to be a pan- Pandemic. Yeah, and uh, right there, yeah. It was, we played the first show in Mexico City, March 10th. And that's when the, like the night of our show is when the, the rest of the world was like, you know, we should all shut down. And so we got on a plane and came back and I came back to Seattle and, and really, you know, I think it was going to be a couple weeks or four weeks or, you know, four weeks outside, six, maybe, you know. And I started recording in that, that, that time turned into two years or a yeah. year and a half, whatever. <laughs> so I had all this time and it was the first time I was able to really spread my wings, songwriting wise, recording wise. I wasn't in a rush to do anything. It's not like I was going at a slow pace, but 
that creativity just begat more creativity and i just couldn't stop writing songs because <laughs> i knew i could record it the next day you know when you have that immediate like i can get this in and, and record it and the ideas in my head for the song we can try to achieve tomorrow that's cool uh, you took yeah. advantage of the situation right so that's cool uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i had great support from my you know my wife and and uh which is really um you know, I dedicated a couple songs. I wrote a couple of songs on this. Not these aren't the two only two songs I've written for her, but I just kind of with her, I like like Fallen, more more. Lighthouse, I think. Yeah. Fallen, man. Yeah, it's like yeah. you know, I realized during the pandemic, not that it. I mean, I knew we have a really good thing, but like for her, I like her perfume and stuff. There's certain things like, like take my breath away. And I realized these things during COVID. You know, we we're all kind of reflecting during COVID. I'm like, I have such a good, good thing, and I and I really uh, and she's so supportive of me. Like, I'm gonna go to the studio today. She goes, you should go as much as you, you know, can, and uh, and play that, record that song I heard you play last right last mm -hmm. night. You know, she'd, she'd be humming it, and and so it's really. I realize I'm in a really good position, and I appreciate it. That's cool. It's quite clear. I got, I got, listen, I got to get my little... Your dog, yeah. got a new, did you hear him? Yeah, yeah, yeah him? a bit, but it's okay. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> we just got a new puppy. <laughs> you know, brand new little guy. Yeah, we don't hello. even know what he is. Yeah. <laughs> so my wife went away in that room and he's, he cries. And she's not... Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and so, yeah, your wife, it's quite clear, like, she's your muse, like, musically, because... Like in the past, before you had Wasted Heart by Loaded and Redone on yeah. Tenderness, you got Hi Ho You, yeah. stuff like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, so, yeah, it's not like yeah, a new yeah, thing. Nice. She's been an inspiration of you, like for the Yeah, writing. it's easy, I guess, to, to write uh, uh, fond, fondly about her. But, you know, in the same, same breath, you know, some of the topics I, that just kind of came to me, you know, like just don't know was. I had the song and I had the melody for the chorus and I didn't have the words and um, and I was walking my dog, not this one, <laughs> or old dog, um, at one night and the stars were out and the you know the water was to my left and and I'm humming this melody and I look up and I'm wondering how many people have looked at these stars you know since the beginning of humanity have. These are thoughts we think of during COVID, you know, like this huge philosophical, like, and the water, how long has it been or how many people has the fish from the sea, you know, fed how, for how long, you know? And so I don't, like the eat to the ethers ever glow, you know, mm -hmm. to the oceans under tow. I'm like, Oh wow. This is, I had to pick up my dog. I'd written the whole chorus and, and I'd pick up my dog and I didn't have my phone so I couldn't make a voice note. Mm -hmm. And um, I got back home and wrote those lyrics down. And, you know, uh, some of the lyrics I got like the, the came were either like philosophical things or like forgiveness is me being an observationalist traveling around the planet um, and me seeing the divide that we're trying to the narrative of the divide in America uh, that's on cable news. But it, I travel so much in America and I go off and do little side, side trips to little towns. I do it all the time where people don't know me and I just go to coffee shops because I like doing this. Yeah. I like looking at, looking at humanity and, mm -hmm. and interacting and seeing what's going on. I'm interested in it. And I didn't see a divide. I've never seen a divide. Nobody's ever asked me what political party I'm with or if I'm some libtard or some right wing wacko. Never never. So uh forgiveness is my little try. I've I did it on, on tenderness as well. But it's a little mm -hmm. try it like, you know, hey let let's forget about all of this because not only in America but the human race, we're we're all joined. I see it because I get to play music to people all over the world from Kuala Lumpur you know, to Little Rock, Arkansas, whatever. And and everybody's reactions is the same. Yeah, you yeah. know, <laughs> music's, music's such a universal gathering point um, that uh, I get to see, I guess, the very best of humanity or, or a, a joined humanity. 
And um, so I guess I choose to have a, a, a much more positive view on things because <laughs> I know it's there. Yeah, I do know sure. it's there. Okay, yeah. okay. Cool, cool. And so, yeah, like, um, also it's got its own vibe and it's different from tenderness. Because tenderness was there was more elements of a bluegrass country-ish, if you will. There was some yeah, fiddle, yeah, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. one is um, kind of more rock and energetic in a way, more punk rock as well. Because you get a, um, just another shakedown. Uh, I saw God on 10th Street, although it's kind of you know, yeah. it's, it's just a punk rock song, but just with less distortion, yeah. I guess. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Totally. And uh, but it still got like the same. You, you found like. Kind of your own style with those two recalls to me and this is a song ep as well which is like songs oriented good like vocal beautiful vocal harmonies you know and uh, and melodies a good arrangement good chord progression tasty keys in here and there we get even like a right. mellotron effect on lighthouse stuff like that yeah. so so it's pretty cool yeah. so, so you definitely found like your voice on I guess on tenderness and yeah, lighthouse. Yeah, and yeah. Found something like really personal. I'd say. I I believe you. Well, thank you. Um, I appreciate oh, yeah. that a lot. Thank you. Um, you know, um, finally, listen on tenderness. The reason you know we have the bluegrass feel and all that, simply because I used Shooter's band and Sh Shooter Jennings. Yeah. And Shooter produced the record, so with his band, you're going to get Aubrey on the fiddle. You're going to get uh, John with the pedal steel. And I loved it. I was like, wow, this is, you know, my songs are taking this turn. Yeah. And and this is, I'll let it go. Let's let it ride. I, I, I haven't experienced this before. It's great. And the songs fit into that style of uh, instrumentation. And maybe these songs would have sound, sounded more like Tenderness if I used Shooter's Band. Mm -hmm. But it was simply, uh, it was simply COVID. People, you know, couldn't, I couldn't have people around, you no know, nobody could shoot on his band. Yeah. <laughs> no access. And I was in Seattle. So, you know, I used a different group of players when I could use them. Uh, mostly it was Martin and I in the studio for a couple of years. And then we'd call it like we got this the guitar player who I love, Tim DiGiulio. Uh, he's, he's everybody in Seattle's favorite guitar player, even Mike McCready's. You know this Tim DiGiulio, and so we got Tim in. He would come in on for a day. How do you spell his last name? DiGiulio, D U J U L I O. Okay, okay. DiGiulio. He's, and Martin he's is like your producer on this uh, record. Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. And he did a bunch of loaded records. He's done Mark Lanigan. He's done Queens of Stone Age, uh, Screaming Trees. He's done a lot of stuff. Okay. And you got a drummer, uh, I guess, he, also on the record. Because I, I guess you so play, the, and there's also I, some female vocal vocals, I guess. Some, right. Sometimes. Right? I I played some some drums because some drums, uh, yeah. uh yeah because uh there were times when I had a song and there was no drummer so I got my drumming chops back. I'm not great, but I'm I know a feel. I can play a feel. Um, I butcher the drums. I hit them too hard. I do all that kind of stuff. Uh, but Jamie from Shooter's Band, Jamie Douglas, came up and played. But I'd have them for like two days. Okay. So I'd have, line up like 12 songs. Like, okay. <laughs> you know. And Jamie can handle it. And Tim DiGiulio would say, okay, can you play on five songs today? We got you for one day. Like, <laughs> you got to be great, stand the test of time, be iconic. But you got to do it in the next 10 minutes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, he never heard though. songs before, and he was so great. Um, uh, but really, the, it's just a matter of like what Martin and I did, and and all, like Mellotron and all this stuff. Martin is great at little like synthesizer and key shit, you know. And then we had a, for our piano parts that were serious. We had Ryan Burns, who's a just a local guy up here, another local guy who I've seen play. I'm like, he's great. Uh, can we get him in? You know, okay. so you go through the proto COVID protocol to get the people in. Uh, you know all that stuff. <laughs> so you get him in. You're like, okay, can we do eight songs with you today? <laughs> uh, so anyhow, um, the sounds are different, but I think you know you're talking about the songs, and and I found in my own place. 
I started, I, you know, I really always look up to the way Mark Lanigan approached all his solo music. Simple. He's got this massive voice. I don't have that. So he could fill a room with his voice, you know, really, literally. Um, but he and Greg Dooley, like, were two guys, you know, I became good friends with Mark and then through Mark, uh, Greg Dooley, and watching, like, Twilight Singers and just loved it all, loved it all. Uh, the Gutter Twins. That, do you know about all this stuff? Gutter Twins, these... no. Len and oh, again, man. I'm familiar, very familiar with him, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. Bell of the Ball, there's a song. I mean, oh, my God, you know. Uh, oh, my God. So just influenced by that. And, that, you know, Wasted Heart, like you mentioned back in 2008, that's when I first started to listen to my acoustic. Um, and I rested up against my chest when I play. I sit down when I write my songs. So the, so the acoustic's up against your chest. And it really tells you what range to sing in. Mm. And it's not screaming. You know, it's more talking in this, singing in this voice I'm talking to you in right now. I'm not projecting out. I'm just singing. Um, so I really started to follow that and started writing a group of songs, a bunch of which became Tenderness. Um, kept writing songs. Uh, I think now I just listen to my acoustic. I, I've learned to sing in this smaller place, just right in front of me. I don't project across to the wall. <clears throat> I know how to sing because of all the, you know, I've been singing background vocals since I was, you know, I mean, I mean serious background vocals, like starting in guns. Like, you're like you're quite a good lead singer too in Loaded as well. I mean, you got a good voice. Sang, sang, Sang a lot there, you know. Sang um, so I know how to sing, and I and I had to learn a kind of a new way to sing, which is just right here in a box in front of you. You know, in my studio, my voice sounds just a natural room. It sound it's like it's almost tuned to my voice, um, and it's almost tuned to my guitar, my acoustic guitar, and my bass, and the drums sound great in this room, and all of that stuff. Um, it gives you confidence to just kind of go wherever you want. Um, I don't know if I've chosen a style because I won't. <laughs> I won't choose a style because there's so much music out there that just comes to you in different ways. Um, I've got like a disco song that's going to, you know, uh, it's about like, <laughs> it's about, uh, it's about like these druggies came into this, this abandoned building down the street from my studio. And you know, you knew it was not going to end up well. You knew that burning that that building was going to burn or something, you know. But just watching it progress, you know. Uh, and I wrote like a disco song with a drum machine and everything. <laughs> uh, so you'll hear that at some point. Um, but you know, just kind of going everywhere. But I, I really like lyrically. I, I try to find truth, truths, to 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 write about. So. While it might be a disco song I'm telling you about, the lyrics are pretty pretty grim. <laughs> but they're sung in this way, like it's like, hey, like yeah, party. Tempo and yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 party. Oh, shit. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, Susan and I have a radio show, and it's called Three Chords and the Truth. Mm -hmm. And that's just really my philosophy of, like, good songs. You know, Lemmy was great at Three Chords and the Truth, you know. <laughs> And so was Johnny Cash, and so was Prince. Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of great music I um, really admire. Is not, not a lot of chords and, you know, music stuff. It's just like this straight-ahead thing with, with some truth behind it. Yeah, truth, personal, like genuine. Like, yeah. Genuine, yeah. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So more specifically, Hope and I Just Don't Know, which has been done with Slash and uh, JC, respectively. So yeah. you, you already mentioned I Just Don't Know, so you wrote it during COVID and stuff. And Hope was the same thing. It was a song like you finished later on with Slash, but you already had the bulk of the songs before during your writing session during the COVID? No, no um, uh, je, uh, Hope mm. is a song recorded at my house in 1996. Okay, <laughs> so... So like an erotic outsider uh, time, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that lyric is like it sounds like a a pressing issue of right now, you know. But I I wrote it in 1996, which goes to show you, you know, 
Mm-hmm. The same concerns are, are still yeah. valid now. Mm-hmm. Um, Slash, I, I recorded Slash, that guitar stuff he does in 1996 at my house. I worked the tape oh, really? machine and with him. He had come over, heard the song. He's like, you want me to play on this? I'm like, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be amazing. That was for this record. Uh, it was called Beautiful Disease. Yeah, it was a record I out. had. Mm-hmm. Right, it never came out. So I got the masters back finally for all these songs. And when we were when we were choosing songs for Lighthouse, it just seemed not because Slash is on it or Abe Laborio is on it. That the the which it, he, Slash is amazing on. My you know my one of my best buddies happens to be fucking probably the best the coolest guitar player on the planet. You know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, cool. <laughs> and, and, and same with Jerry, you know, like Jerry spends Christmas at our house. We're, we're close. He's like an uncle to my daughters, you know, he's known him since 1990. He's a wonderful human and uh, a friend of my fam, me and my family and uh, happens to be Jerry fucking Cantrell, you know, <laughs> who can rip your heart out with a cool solo, you know. Yeah. Um, so Slash Hope was from 1996. We chose that because of the lyrical content to go on this first Lighthouse record. There may be some other things from um, that Beautiful Seas record that come out on other records, yeah. or maybe I'll just put out the record. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have a lot of material. Yeah, you um, had some, I think like uh, on the first loaded, Seattle Head was supposed to be on Beautiful Disease, right? The song Seattle Head. Yes. Yeah, 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 there is a version. There yeah. is a version for Seattle. And there's also a neurotic outsiders version okay, of yeah. seattle yeah yeah yeah. true I, yeah. I never heard anything from beautiful disease obviously but uh i think i saw the track listing somewhere right uh, on the, right on the net but uh <laughs> yeah that that was a, that was a that was a growing you know that's one of those experiences in your life where you learn to uh, you know take disappointment and mm-hmm. like okay how do i twist this into something good and it just got me going you know like oh you're gonna keep you're not going to put it out, number one, and you're going to keep it. Like yeah. those are my songs. <laughs> those yeah. are my songs. Those are my master. I call them uh, my house. You know. Uh, so that was um, that was something. You know, we all have bumps in our lives, and that was one of the bumps that uh, I didn't let keep me down. You know, I just kept going. Um, so, uh, but I got him back, which is really cool. Yeah. Uh, and having Jerry on on just don't know it's, it's just perfect, right? Like his guitar playing's perfect for that song, and his vocals at the end, his, his backup vocals are just beautiful, and uh, the song, the, I, kind of that. It's yeah. a perfect song to to me. Like it's, like, it's just like the like chip away was on tenderness. It's not the same kind at all, but uh, it's so immediate, catchy. You know, the songs you fell in love with immediately. You know, I just don't know. Uh-huh. Really strong to me, yeah. Yeah, just like Sheep Away oh. was on the last one, you know. Oh, uh, thank you. For okay. different reasons. Great, you know? man. You know? <laughs> okay. This is an easy interview to do. You like it all. Great. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. And silly question, did you really saw God on Thames Street? <laughs> I, you know, it was probably some homeless guy, to be honest with you. But, uh, yeah, you know, um, ten, my, my daughter lives in the Lower East Side of New York and you go up and there's 10th street and my friend lives up on 10th street and I walked up Bowery to 10th and, uh, you know, there was a guy spitting and cursing, you know, <laughs> like we could be God. <laughs> we don't know. He's pissed off. He's pissed off enough to be God, you know, with everything that's going on in the human race that could be God. <laughs> and, uh, that just started this, you know, I had this on 10th, and that's all I had. And um, the original lyric, I'm like, okay, what's this got to be about? Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So probably, just, the code, probably just a, <laughs> yeah, he's probably just a wino, but who knows? We don't know. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. And those are really good songs, these uh, Falling Ones on this record that I really love. And, uh, it's it's fun like fallen fallen ones the title are kind of similar but it's not the similar topic at, at all and all that yeah no but, yeah. yeah I kind of changed that but I was gonna change it because I saw that when we chose this I'm like hmm fallen fallen ones oh well you know let it go 
Yeah, very <laughs> strong sounds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you did tour behind Tenderness, and that was pretty cool. I caught the show in yeah. Paris at the time, and because uh, yeah, you got a shooter band. You had like you were even playing some stuff like. Uh, River of Deceit by Matt Season. You played some cool yeah, yeah. deep song, deep deep, uh, deep cuts from uh, GNR as well because you play Wayne the First, Dust and Bones, I think, stuff like that. Yeah, that was right. really cool. Yeah. And uh, so, do you plan yeah. to tour behind Lighthouse as well? Yes, yes, for sure. Um, not sure when yet. Um, just kind of putting together a band. Uh, you know, I've got my friend Mike from from Loaded. Mm -hmm. is going to be my musical director for this thing. He's really good at this kind of stuff. He does a lot. He's going to play bass. Uh, he's, a, he's an amazing bass player. So Mike, and I have this long-standing relationship with Mike musically. I trust him, and I trust him on the road, all of that stuff. So he's helping me put together a band. I'm going to do a show at a record store here um, in Seattle on December 8th. Mm -hmm. You know, just to, just to, uh, there's a, do you know, have you heard of Easy Street Records? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here in Seattle. Yeah, yeah, by yeah, name. Yeah, it's like yeah, a yeah. lot of, a lot of bands go and play there. They're touring bands, international bands, huge bands will come and play this place. It's kind of just a really cool vibe. It's a great record store. You know, you, you sign records after the performance. It's like a kind of like when your record comes out, this is a thing you do. So this will be like a, my almost my record release party okay. type of deal. That's yeah, so we'll see. We're going to use Tim DiGiulio. Uh, we're going to use some of the people that played on the record and for this gig, and, and we'll rehearse and see how it, you know, I'm always, I was interested. I, I layer so many backing vocals on on this these Lighthouse mm -hmm. songs because I had time, and I mm. just kind of went crazy and, like, I can create almost keyboard pads with, with backing vocals, you know? Um, so everybody who's going to be in my band's got to sing. And Shooter's band, everybody sang. We had yeah. Aubrey, you know, played fiddle and sang like an angel. And she could do like that hard high part of Dust and Bones, you know? Uh, we did Dead Horse where she sang, she's, <laughs> I'm a mad an old cowboy. You know, <laughs> she's sang it great. I can't sing that high, you know. Uh, so uh, we'll see who's going to be. Yeah, Aubrey. Cool, maybe we'll cool. pick up Aubrey. I don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll see. Okay, okay. And I guess you get some room maybe next year because you, you just did like yeah. a huge war tour with with guns, you know. So maybe like any... yeah, I'm resting right now. Oh, yeah. uh oh, uh oh, my dog. Uh, see, this is what happens. <laughs> okay, he did something bad. He, he, he got on the keyboard. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so um yeah and yeah we mentioned loaded i guess for playing like loud hard rock music you get guns and roses and to do some more do. metal personal stuff you get your solo career so maybe there's no room for loaded anymore in that context but still it's cool there's a, there's always room for loaded you know yeah. That'll that, but that'll happen when it happens. You know, uh, I do play big rock music with Guns N' Roses, and we play a lot of it, and we tour the world doing it. We play long shows, uh, and we Very cover cool. kind of all all the rock that you need to be covered. For me, as a as a as a rocker, I'm I'm good, you know, and I'm it's the best. I think it's the best band, Roland, you know, and I think. Uh, my cup of runneth, runneth over with rock, with, yeah. with guns. So when I come home and write music, it really, I've already started going this direction seven years ago with what I'm doing, yeah. with Lighthouse. And it's so satisfying to me. And it's really fun for me to explore a different, unexpected, I think for fans of Guns N' Roses, it's, it's unexpected and that's great, you know, to come along with me on my journey. Yeah, yeah. Let's figure it out, you know. Uh, but loaded, yeah, loaded is like a, a lifelong. You know, once you're in the gang, you can never get out. Oh yeah, and you got yeah. tattooed on your arm as well, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can't totally, go away. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and by the way, hats off to you guys. And I know some people sometimes bitch about the Gianna uh, sets to be too long and stuff, but I'm definitely on the opposite side because you always play three hours plus of music. And yeah. last time in Paris was three hours, three hours and 30 minutes, I think. And really, 
hats off to you congrats because that's really cool because I mean you're not spring chickens anymore and uh, <laughs> no. and it's like you could charge the same money to play one hour 45 or two hours of music so I really consider it like a gift for the extra 90 minutes you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, uh, yeah. Bravo. Yeah, I like that. I like this long, long set. It's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Axel, man, Axel loves, uh, you know, I, I think it's, God damn it, it's like, what songs do you take out? You know, if you wanted to play shorter. Because yeah. there's, don't get me wrong, I my body would love it if we only played <laughs> two and a half hours. Or, yeah. you know, most bands like, uh, play two hours. Yeah. Two hours and ten, ten minutes or something. And we're playing 3.30. I'd love to play shorter because just I'd be in less pain the next day. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but there's just too many songs and and people stay for the whole thing. Nobody leaves, you know. So it's like, okay, they must be enjoying this. Yeah. Great. We'll whip out Coma or Locomotive or, you know, we're whip, whipping out other songs. Uh, I really love playing um, Bad Obsession. You know. Uh, um was pretty tied up yeah yeah we have so many songs so great even stuff like reckless life and stuff like that That reckless yeah yeah yeah. but we'll play it all reckless and shadow (laughs) and you know like like i'm looking at axe i'm like yeah you sure man because we got to play again in a couple nights you know (laughs) don't rip but he's uh he's uh he's a monster man that guy uh axel like his longevity we've we've had to cancel only one one show because of vocals because you get a swelling no wonder you know mm-hmm. swelling on one of his sides <laughs> like dude and he'll still want to play the show and the doctor be like you could ruin my voice forever yeah. you know we we canceled one in glasgow a couple of years ago we made it up 